if Jonathan Gannon does what uh, we think he is capable of doing, we're going to be back to back to the gang green defense, mm. what, what wow. Philadelphia is known for. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to be good as, you know, the Reggie White days and when Seth was in his prime, but that's what people are going to think about when they come to Philadelphia. Sports Day, we are back. Welcome back in, everybody. Rob Ellis, Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks on this Thursday. Hope you're doing well, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. All right, our next guest played in the NFL, played professional football as well. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Coach underscore Marcus, M-A-R-K-U-S-06. Also check out his podcast, Pro Fan Talk, and he is a, uh, a, a, a friend of the show. Uh, he is, uh, you can see his comments a lot of times in the chat section, does a great job with that, analyzing the NFL. Marcus, how we doing, man? Good to see you. Good, man. Good, man. I appreciate the opportunity to be on again, man. I'm still no question, watching bro. you guys, learning from you guys, <laughs> trying to step my and, game up, man. And, 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 and also chastising us when he gets the shot. <laughs> Every now and then I sneak one in. I sneak one in. <laughs> a little, little jab. I don't know if it was a haymaker, but some jabs. Uh, <laughs> um, but let, Coach Marcus, let's get your uh, your take on this thing first with the uh, with everything that's gone down here in Cleveland with, with the Sean Watts and, uh, and the suspension for 11 games. Surprised not surprised where are you uh that seems to be par for the course uh i think it's kind of a, a a sad reality right now when it seems like they spend more energy on the civil case than they did on the criminal case mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it, it, it you know when it comes to money now you want to put the effort into it that's kind of suspect but it's it's par for the course and it's you know the nfl just does not have a good track record when it comes to this stuff and this is this goes hand in hand uh, uh, with the stuff that happened in the history. Uh, when you go back to Ray Rice, to Greg Hardy, all the names you guys have mentioned before. Um, and it's, it's, it's weird the way this thing went down. Um, and, and you read my post earlier when I said that it was a hundred K what I was, what I was meaning was that the initial, I think this was back in the criminal court. I, I think the initial offer was for him to settle out of court for a hundred grand. Then it blew up into all this other stuff. Right. Um, so for, for it to just get this far and take this long just to get to this point, that's really not a good look on the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you hit the nail on the head. They're just happy to get it over with so they can move on and it can be business as usual. Not to mention, they still got this powder keg with the, with the Daniel Snyder, John Gruden stuff yep. brewing. Because they wanna they wanna shift all of the tension away from that because that stuff is gonna involve owners and, and, and that's what they really don't want to deal with. Oh, absolutely. Right. And and Gruden's not going away with this, by the nope. way. No, so, no, he's not a part. No, he's not affiliated no. with anybody now. No, nope. so he's not. He's not a, in any major network, right? So yep. at this point, he has nothing else to lose. He's made say, enough money. Yep. Yeah. Say what made you want to say about John Gruden, but I don't blame him. Out of what six hundred fifty thousand. Uh, emails that were viewed. His was the only one that leaked publicly. Mm. And he don't even me, work for the organization? And you don't even mm -hmm. work for him? And, you, and yours is the only one that leaked publicly? I don't blame him for going after the league. No. And yeah, it makes it, the... It, it makes the. It's almost like in high school. Uh, you knew the day that you had to get your book report. And you always saw that one kid. You knew he wasn't prepared for the book report. So they, they do a six-month investigation and they take an oral report from somebody? Stop it. Stop playing. Mm, mm. Stop playing. Um, yeah, interesting. And we'll, we'll further monitor that thing, that's for sure. But, Coach Marks, we haven't talked to you in a little bit here. As we get kind of closer, we're now, man, what, three weeks away uh, coming Sunday, thankfully. Yeah, man. Uh, what's your sense here? Just what's your sense in general of this team as we go into it in an NFC East? It's got the Cowboys who won it last year. It's got Washington, New York. Where do the Eagles fall in your estimation? Uh, I like the Eagles. I think – it is going to come down between uh, the Eagles and Dallas. I think the Eagles have the better team. The X factor is can Jalen Hurts play better than Dak Prescott? That's uh, We have the, the better team. I still think they have the better quarterback until Jalen proves otherwise. I don't need Jalen Hurts to be great or elite. I just need him to be good and consistent. Absolutely. I need you to, to – I need your passing acumen to have leveled up to where you can find the open receiver uh, and deliver the ball on time, period. That's all you need to do. He doesn't 
I need him to be between 275 and 300 around there for an average. Every now and then he's going to spike up above 300. Uh, and every now and then he might have a stinker. But the, the games that he has a stinker, that's when you use your legs. But I don't want using your legs to mean run RPOs that's right. out the daggone gym. Hand the ball to the guys that you pay to run the ball. And if you got to get yourself out of trouble, then we know you can do that. But you got to get that passing game leveled up so you can be consistent, hit the open man consistently. And if he can do that, with that defense we got, the mm -hmm. Eagles are scary. Marcus, I said I don't want my quarterback lead, being my leading rusher. Mm -mm. That's bad for an offense when your quarterback is your leading rusher. Because once he crosses that line of scrimmage, it's open season. And Absolutely. we've seen too many quarterbacks, even go back to last season, Lamar Jackson. It go finally caught week? up to him. Go back to last week. You know, go go, you know, you look at teams now last year. You know, we talk about we've talked extensively about how Arizona faded down the stretch. Mm -hmm. Why? Because teams found a way to better defend against him. And once he couldn't utilize that one asset, which is to take off like a jackrabbit, we find out he has those deficiencies in his passing game. I'm not saying Jalen Hurts has that, but I'm saying you take off one too many times, they're going to figure out how to defend you better, which makes you one-dimensional. But if you keep taking off at the wrong opportunity, I don't want to see you be the next RG3 and ruin your career at a young age. I agree with you 100%. And I think – uh, that is the difference between uh, you You take off and do what you have to do when you need to do it. Right. And if his passing game is dropping back, uh, reading everything, going through his progressions and delivering the ball on time, I think he'll be okay. You can't stop injuries. They got all of these poof helmets and all of this stuff that they're wearing, and guys are still getting hurt every week just like normal. So – it doesn't take much. You saw what happened with Zach Wilson. Uh, nobody touched him. Yep. He just he just he just made a cut, uh, and his knee was like, mm, you might want to think about that next time. But he can't. You can't do nothing about that. So the best way you can protect him is drop back, throw the ball, get rid of the ball. If you have to run, you run. But kill the RPOs. Don't put him in in, in more danger than he has to be. When I look at um, when I when I look at him, I see a drastic improvement in not just you know his 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 you know fundamentals you know fundamentally he's, he's he's getting his footwork down he's going out he's getting through his progression because he's not more tighter and how he's going out there in, in his feet and um you know the way he's throwing the ball you know the mechanics mm -hmm. of it but i'm also seeing you know development and not just that his, but his body you know he's 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 in better shape than he's ever been you know he came in looks like he lost weight but he's actually the same weight but he's more fine, defined, and ripped now. I think at this point, you know, his progression of becoming a good football player from being a good football player to making that next step is going to be evident once he really starts playing. You know, what is your film – when you watch film and when you watch this last game, what did you get at – what did you take from it? Um, I think he he did that to bulk up. You got to take the, be able to take the punishment. You remember number five did that back in the day. Oh yeah, um, yes, yes, and yes. He got he got a little criticized for it because he got too big and he started throwing balls in the dirt. Um, but he got it together. I think Jalen Hurts is in the same boat. He's he's the same weight. He's what he's got less body fat now. Right? Yep. So more he was all more shredded. Yep. He was all he was yep. squatting what six oh five or whatever that ridiculous stuff is. <laughs> you know. So <laughs> from from that standpoint, he's always been ready. Now I, I have no question whatsoever if his body is going to be ready but the reports i heard from him going out to california working with gurus and stuff like that he's getting his mind ready he's he's getting his eyes ready so he can recognize what he's supposed to see and do what he needs to do when he needs to do it and for me that's the most important thing i know he has the physical talents he just got to put it all together and from what i've seen uh i know it's just a preseason game but six for six i appreciate that Mm -hmm. because flip it flip it on the other side. If he'd have been three for six, threw a couple of bad balls, you know the sky would have fell in Philadelphia. Yep. And everybody <laughs> would have been on his back and all of that. So you know what? I'm not going to get too too hyped. I'm not going to get overhyped about it. But I did like what I saw. He got rid of the ball. He made some good decisions. <clears throat> um, and we were better for it. And you see what the potential is. Only by getting him in the fire, playing against other teams, not in practice against ourselves, only by seeing him play against other teams can we see what his true ceiling is. 
Yeah, good, good point. Right, let, let me go to the other side with you, Marcus. Uh, and a defense last year that lacked aggression, uh, maybe because they lacked personnel, uh, didn't create a lot of turnovers to put the offense in good spots, uh, was a team that played, quite, frankly, in a lot of ways soft, didn't sack the quarterback a lot. They've added a lot. There have been a lot of changes on that side of the ball, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. What is your expectation of Jonathan Gannon and that crew? Uh, if Jonathan if Jonathan Gannon does what uh, we think he is capable of doing, we're going to be back to back to the gang green defense, mm -hmm. what, what wow. Philadelphia is known for. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to be good as you know the Reggie White days and when Seth was in his prime, but that's what people are going to think about when they come to Philadelphia. Because we got an anchor in the middle with big man. You know how the big man big movie, Davis. Jordan Davis. That dude, the to see all of the stuff with the double and triple teams, I was like, man, y'all got a problem. And mm -hmm. he's young. Then you got Fletch right next to him. Then you got Hassan Reddy. In my opinion, he's as fast as a linebacker. He's a, he's a hybrid. He's got speed to give. On the other side, you got uh, – Hargrave and, and Sweat, and then the guy I've been holding my hand up for is people sleeping on Kaiser White. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kaiser yes. White balled out for the Chargers last year. He's got that mm -hmm. alpha personality. He was a take charge guy on defense last year, and he led the team to tackles. So I, I didn't understand why they didn't sign him back, though. That was my biggest thing. You know, you I think it was money, Barrett. Were they, were they tight on uh, cap wise? They might have been because they just signed Mac during that time. Remember, they signed Mac. Yeah, uh, they they signed a lot of they signed a lot. They had signed back Williams. They uh, gave Derwin James that crazy money. They knew that had to be coming, right? And I uh, right, well, right, right, right. Their right, coach right. Staley talked about. He was like, "I love this guy." Like, I he 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 went over the top praising him. So I, you would think it's. I don't think it's a, a per, uh, performance thing. I think it's mm -hmm. money. I think he was in the, like kind of the same situation like Bradbury, because yeah. ain't no way New York should have got rid of Bradbury. But right. thank you, we appreciate it. So. Um, and the one thing I wanted to say about Bradbury, I haven't heard much from him. I just keep hearing a lot about him. And what that makes me believe is he is that guy on the defense that comes to work, period. He don't say much. He's not a rah-rah guy. That's the guy that's going to come in and be and get down to business. And what I mean with that is we have a very balanced team when it comes to personality. Barry, you know what I'm talking about. When you got some of them guys that are the rah-rah guys, you know sometimes they rub you the wrong way. It's like, man, I ain't trying to hear that right now. Right. Be, be quiet, bro. Exactly. Start there and play, man. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 and it yeah. seems like we got guys like that that are loud and boisterous, like Cox, like BG, and you need that. But you also need that balance on the other side, where it's that, that quiet enthusiasm that you know that guy's locked in and that emanates. So you know it's time. All right, it's time to get down to business. And we got that on both sides with Bradbury and with uh and with Jalen Hurts. So I think we got a good mix of talent. I think we got a good mix of personalities, and they bought into what Nick Sirianni is doing. I think we we are definitely on the uptrend. And now finally, you got a lot of a lot of national media heads talking about us now because they don't know what to expect. And again, that falls back to everything rides on what Jalen Hurts is gonna do. Has he leveled up? If he's leveled up, man, y'all better look out because it's mm. it's gonna be a problem when you come to Philly. Mm. Well, but when I look at it though, you know, um, can they sustain you know the same run to pass ratio that they had last year? Um, how big does Jalen have to be in order to get past that? Can make it. We were we were running at a clip that I mean there were a couple of times where it was it was uh the run to pass ratio was we had 26 runs and 18 19 passes. Is that sustainable over the entire season? Or, you know, what do you see as far as this year? If they could do that again, or is it the league caught up with them and they're not going to be able to do it? Um, that remains to be seen. It, it depends on how the season starts. Um, if we'll know by midseason what we get with, with Jalen Hurts. If, we, if we're still running the ball and if we're still back to doing RPOs, then you got the answer to your question. I don't see any problem if he if his – Passing acumen is is where it needs to be. I don't see any problem with having the balanced attack. You can you can do, you know, at least ten to fifteen runs a game that don't require the RPO. If we can do that, you're still going to be on the upside with the passing and throwing it through the air. So that's where we need to be. Where 
if if for whatever reason the other people on the other side of the ball get paid too so if they're shutting us down we got to run it to open it up we should be able to do that but it can't all depend on Jalen Hurts rolling out and just running around people and running past folks we got to do it the right way make it balanced I saw play action I saw him under the center I saw a screen thank you Lord finally yeah and we haven't it, seen that in years tell me about it man <laughs> and, and not to mention I don't think too many people have mentioned it much but how many times did we even go in motion last year? Right. It, it right. didn't happen. So all of that stuff is coming together, and we're giving defenses a, a true look and not know what to expect. And if we can do that, I think Jalen will be fine. If he's good and we got that uh, a legitimate <sighs> running offense, I'm not talking about, again, not the RPOs and all that kind of stuff, but hand the ball off, give it to Sanders, give it to Scott, give it to Gainwell, whatever you got to do, um, and throw in some screens with Goddard, and I would like to see Gainwell taking some of those running back screens. To me, that's another form of play action, and we can make it happen. Marcus, yeah, what, what do you make? What do you make, Marcus, of Jalen Rager's situation? Uh, I, I'm on the fence with this guy. He hasn't done much of anything in training camp. He's a guy who's on the bubble, who has mm -hmm. to shine. I say to make this team. Uh, Robin Bear to convince he's going to make this team. I'm still not there yet, and I've gone on record a number of times saying that he's in trouble. What do you make of him when you know your your livelihood is on the line, yet you've done nothing really to stand out yet? There's something to be said for a player with a chip on the shoulder. Not to mention uh, your job on the line. Uh, I think he's going to make the team, not necessarily for his performance, but uh, he already knows the offense. And from what I've been hearing about from you guys, especially you, Barrett, he's been having a pretty good camp. He has had a pretty good camp. You're not going to get somebody like Jalen – he might not get all of the opportunities in a preseason <clears> game. <throat> you know how that rolls. So mm -hmm. uh, days like today, scrimmaging against the, the Browns and, and, and joint practices where you're going against somebody else where you can you don't know what to expect. Now we see how we operate there, and that can translate to what's going to happen in the game. I don't know how many opportunities he's going to get in a preseason game. I think he's going to make the team. Who, who are we keeping? If if uh, if we let him go, well, so, I mean, yeah, they do have you know they they do have Covey. They like Covey. They like Just Covey because his his return ability. Yeah, high towers, a draft. Maybe, maybe Ward comes back and Ward, 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 Yeah. What Ward, do you think about Huntley? Guard. I thought Huntley was going to be the the kick returner, punt returner. He can do. I, I've seen him really do much punt return, mm -hmm. but he is the number one kickoff kick returner. returner. Yeah. Now now can they sustain that? Um, throughout the year with him being that guy. Um, I don't know, you know, because that's a roster spot, you know, and they still don't know how they're going to divvy up the linebacker, wide receiver, running mm -hmm. back. You know, there might be some guys that need to make the team that might, you know, push them out of the number count. But, you know, that, that's that's something I'm anxious to see, you know, going forward. I, I hope he balls out because I want to see if they're not going to keep him, get that trade equity up. Did you, but did you see him do enough at the running back position? You know what I'm saying in this last preseason game to warrant him having a running back spot. Uh, he had a decent game. Um, I, I didn't see anything. He had a good he had a good uh, game against the Jets, but not good enough to where I would have to let somebody go. I thought he missed some holes that you know, mm -hmm. and he's kind of too. He was running too fast. Sometimes you got to slow it down a little bit. I know that sounds crazy when you're nope. when you're running back, but you got to slow down sometimes. Let the play develop. And then Absolutely. hit it. You know, to me, he was hitting the hole too fast, and the pole wasn't there initially. He had to wait a little bit for the hole to open up initially. I thought he missed a couple of those, but he still ran hard, though. He still mm -hmm. ran hard. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you 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 called it right there. Uh, they used to tell me that in college. Don't hit the hole too fast. If you got a right. pulling guard, you know, you got to let the guy go into the hole or you're going to get your head blowed off. So, <laughs> you know, it, and but that's something, especially with rookies, you get that adrenaline going and you – you want to score a touchdown every time you touch the ball because you never know when it's your last opportunity. Right. So, but it takes effort to calm yourself down and and really see what you're supposed to see so you can hit the right hole, give it enough time. All of that, all of those little nuances to make you a successful running back. It is hard when you're in that situation as a rookie and you got the crowd and all of that kind of stuff to calm yourself and say, okay, now let me do what I'm supposed to do. Now the stuff in practice that we were running reps, now it comes into play. 
Yeah, but when we talk about a team also that has supposedly has all this surplus in talent across the board, something has to give. If they keep 9, 10 offensive linemen, they keep extra linebackers, an extra D lineman, something has to give for a team that likes to keep four running backs. If they want to stick to their game plan of keeping four running backs, I think Huntley would be that fourth back. But then what gives in another area? Well, I mean, what do they give? Oof. Yeah, and, and they're in a tough spot with guys who need to play special teams. Linebackers, Absolutely. there's going to be a lot of Absolutely. linebackers, you know, other positions. Because Sean Bradley has to make this team. He's the best special teams player, you know, in terms yeah. of like linebacker depth. So it's a, that's a great question, Derek. Uh, it's not, this is going to be one of the hardest cut downs when they have to get it down to the roster, the last one. One of the hardest final cut downs they've had in a long time. And that's good. Mm-hmm. That means you have talent. I mean, for sure. And Mark, let me ask you, what, what area concerns you? Uh, Re- not really a concern as more of a question mark uh, is Jalen Hurts. And I believe he is ready. Uh, well, Jalen Hurts first. And second, uh, I believe he is ready. Uh, but we'll have to see is Marcus Epps at safety. Mm. Mm. I like He's Marcus been- Epps. I do too. But uh, I want to see him game time during the season. So we'll just have to wait and see. My biggest mm. thing is my biggest thing going to this season. Um, of course, you know Hertz is going to be the number one. Gann is going to be number two, but um, I want to see how the big fella in the middle, <clears throat> if he can play this one gap system, you know, what I'm saying as opposed to you know he's a reading react guy. He was taught to read and react at mm-hmm. Georgia. You know, he hit first, gets up the ball, hits, move the guy that's in front of him back, and then go make a play. Mm-hmm. In this system, when they run four down instead of the three three down system, he's gonna have to get up the field. Can he get up the field and you know saying create havoc that way? You know, jump the gap. That's what you know Fletcher Cox has done his entire career. Now they're asking him the two gaps. I mean, he's hit a guy, read, and then react. Can the big fella do it? Can Davis go out there and do it? You know, that's, that'll be my biggest question. Can he get up the field, make a play, redirect? You know, all that stuff comes with being a one gap type of player you got to differentiate two and can the big fella do it is it barrett let me ask you just to follow up on to clarify do, are you worried about his conditioning or just the ability that to get off two blocks like what, what is your too. biggest concern i'd say the conditioning oh okay. well, that'll probably be first and foremost because i i you know he kind of faded away as the game went on you can't mm-hmm. afford to fade away you got to keep going as the game goes on you you're supposed to get stronger because the guy was you know opposite of you He's got to be getting tired, so you got to have that frame of mind. But can he go an entire game of right. playing every single snap? That's number one. But number two, it's a difference in philosophy. It's a difference in the way you think when you're out there on the field. You know, if, if, if it if it they call a defense and you're in charge of that one gap, that C gap, that sure gap, and you got to jump that gap, can you get up the field and make something happen from that gap? Or is he still going to go out there – in two gap, that means grab a guy and has the he has the A, me uh, the B gap, and the C gap. You know, what I'm saying sometimes you just say, all right, I want you to get this gap, get up the field, create havoc. Can he do that? I'm, you know, that's going to be tough for me, and I, I I can't wait to really look at that and see how he does with that. That is, he is. That's yeah. a good, that's a good point, man, because he, uh, we saw what his track record was at Georgia, because like he he went at it. But when he ran, <clears throat> when he ran out of gas, he was out of gas, mm-hmm. and I and I've been noticing. Not that it means anything, but most of the times when you see him at training camp, he got them sleeves on, trying to, you know, lose his hot as, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. he's he, he's it's hot as blazes out there. You got you got them sweat sleeves on, but you know what? When you as big as he is, he's been doing this his whole life, so this is not going to be anything different for him. Yes, he has to keep up pace. Yes, he has to get that game speed and I think is uh, I think he will, but that's what Jonathan Gannon gets paid to do. If he is a certain way, if he's running out of gas at a certain time, what are you as a, as his coach going to do to counteract that? There are some things you can do, your rotations, your all of that kind of stuff. So, it's the it's Gannon's job to get the most out of him. So I'll be interested to see how that rotation goes. I want to see him take on them two and three offensive linemen and, and, and get double team and stuff like that because that's going to open up Fletch and everybody else to do some things that they might not normally right. be able to do. I, I heard your interview with, with Big Hugh. 
And he and he was the same, like trying to get him in position. And somebody was like, "All right, I'm gonna take care." Uh, I think he said Trot was talking to him or something. Mm-hmm. And it was like, "All right, I need you to do this. We're gonna take <laughs> care of you, but you have to do this." Right, and right, right. <laughs> same situation. Like, like, I need you to do this, big guy, and trust me, it'll work out. But he seems like again back to the personality thing. He seems like the guy that's very coachable, and he's not trying to outshine nobody. Mm-hmm. He knows where he is. He's humble. Uh, he knows his place on the totem pole, um, and he looks like he's willing uh, willing to do the work and maybe avoid some of the limelight to do the right thing. That'll open up somebody else, and that's the kind of stuff that I like to see. You got somebody that's willing, like, yes, coach, I'll do it, and then smash somebody, and that's the kind of person you want on your squad. Mm. Good stuff, Coach Marcus. We appreciate it. Again, appreciate check you, out, brother. Check out Thank the you, podcast, man. Pro Fan Talk. Where can people uh, uh, see that? Uh, uh, Pro Fan, uh, Pro Fan Talk podcast every <laughs> Thursday night. So tonight at seven PM Eastern okay. time. Okay. Uh, tonight, my guest will be um, my boy Luther Broughton. Luther, former Eagle, former Eagle. Tied in, tied in. Big Luther, blue. Big Luther is coming on with me. And Bear, one, one, one real quick thing. Didn't you play with Tim Lester? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. okay. Me and Tim, Tim went to, dude, yeah. Me and Tim went to Eastern Kentucky together, man. Oh, get out. Okay. Yeah. Tim was my fullback. <laughs> Tim, <laughs> That's what's Tim, up. Was, yeah. Tim was the guy. Well, my freshman year, there was another guy in there named Elroy Harris. He had broke all the records. Then Tim was the next guy in line. Yep. And then yep. Tim tore his knee. Mm-hmm. And then when I stepped on the field, I never stepped off. But when Tim got healthy, <laughs> he became a fullback. Wow. So, that's so crazy. Tim worked out for yeah. everybody. There yeah, man. Tim was responsible for a lot of my success, man. But anyways, check me out tonight, uh, okay. 7 p.m. Pro Fan Talk. Luther Broughton will be on. We're going to be talking more Eagles and one step closer to this season, man. I'm there ready. There you go. Marcus, we Tell appreciate a couple minutes today, man. Yeah, thank you. You got it. good, bro. All yeah, right, take you. care. Yeah, that's that's uh, Marcus. You guys see him all the time in the uh, in the chat section as well, chiming in on things. That's a uh, real good insights on the Eagles and the NFL in general. All right, guys, we're going to come back. We'll look at some Eagles that could potentially be pro bowlers. We'll look at some guys who are, who are, you know, going up Barrett. I know you mentioned a couple of them in passing some guys who have really shined in camp a little bit. We'll dive into a bunch of stuff uh, and the guys who need to step up as well, who are veterans and established players. We'll continue with the Eagles talk a little later. We're going to do our three up three down drill. That's teams that are headed up teams that are headed down. We'll look at week nine of the NFL and which rookie from the first round will have the biggest impact this season. We'll do all of that. When we get back, he's Barrett Brooks. He's Derek Gunn. I'm Rob Ellis. We're Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. All right, let's talk a little Razor technology on this Thursday. We know data is everywhere in business today, but when it's locked away in silos, it can't be efficiently used, and businesses don't have time to wait for the insights that shape decision-making. Razor Technologies data management not only integrates data from wherever it's generated or collected, but provides a uniform structure for storing, interpreting, and distributing it to decision makers. Razor helps businesses transform and model their data, use it to populate real-time dashboards, and create shareable reports that highlight key areas of progress as well as warning signs in need of attention. Smart data analytics and the tools to make data insights easily digestible help businesses of all sizes and types discover where they could be untapping significant savings. Razor technology can help you break down your silos and fully realize the value of your data to drive growth for your business. Learn more. Contact Razor Tech today at 866-797-3282, 866-797-3282, or visit us online at razor-tech.com. That's razor-tech.com.